Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Brenna D'Amico about Night Night, which is going to be available November 16th. Welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you too. Thank you for having me. It's exciting because I remember, you know, um, Nikki Costa directed this. Um, she told me about this project a while ago and she was excited about, you know, thriller, psychological thriller, horror aspect of it. A lot of genre bending happening. Mm-hmm. So did you notice that when you read the script for this, that there was a lot of genres happening in this project? Oh, yeah. Like like I've said before, every time I turned a page, I was like, oh, I'm, I know what's going to happen. And then I was like, ah. No, I didn't know that at all. So it's like a little messy with your head. So yeah, it's definitely psychological thriller. It it was definitely a blend of those. Absolutely. And this was like, you've worked on some amazing projects in the past. This was like one of the first, this was like one of your first like lead projects, correct? It, yes, and it was also one that was such a different genre from what I've done. Yeah. Um, I always knew I had a niche for drama. I always, you know, knew I really, really loved that because I was on Code Black as a guest star yeah. as a pregnant teenager. Um, and as soon as I got a little taste of that deep, raw emotion and, you know, the process, creative process of getting into that, I was like, <gasps> That's what I want to do. But like I said, I also love the lighthearted, beautiful, playful work that Disney brought me and being on the middle and all of that. But I do. I was very excited when I read it being like, ooh, thriller. Yes. The Disney, of course, we're going to get to that, obviously. But uh, it's it's interesting, too, because was there kind of a point in your life where storytelling was something you wanted to do or did it kind of just happen? Because I feel like there's different routes we could take, Brenda. There's the one where it's like, I want to do this. And there's one where it just kind of happens. What was it like for you? I think ever since I was little, I had amazing supportive parents and they let me try everything from sports to whatever. Um, and nothing really clicked with me until I did musical theater when I was eight years old. Yeah. Um, and when I was on stage and did musical theater, I was like, this is what I want to do or along the lines of that. And then when I turned about 12, almost 13, I was like, you know what? I don't want to sing and dance anymore. I kind of just want to act. So my mom got me a manager who got, got me my agent in LA and it kind of just went from there. And the rest was history, basically. I guess. (laughs) No, but I loved it. I loved making people laugh and I loved making people feel and I loved, you know, how I felt playing different people. And I just felt uh, like it was a sort of escapism for me as well as being for the audience that was watching me. Oh, for sure. And I feel like people in the industry know this, but a lot of people that are kind of outside a little bit, like theater is where you learn your craft. Like that's kind of like the stepping stone where you where it kind of all starts pretty much. I agree. And I definitely want to get back into theater a lot more. I'm going to New York in February for about four months. And I really, really, really want to start getting back into that a little more because you're right. It's so emotional and it's so about dialogue um, and it's just so raw and authentic. I think it's a great place to start and also pick back up and never stop learning. No, absolutely. Um, You know, the psychological thriller component is obviously a night night is amazing. It's kind of one of those, like there's a lot of kind of like, things that happen with your character a lot of like twists and turns and everything um what are you hoping the audience gets out of it when they get to watch you in night night specifically i really hope that they uh take away just how entertaining and uh you know kind of messed up it is i hope people take away that (laughs) maybe trust your instincts a little more i know women um especially but also just especially every human has such amazing instincts and I feel like we ignore them so much all the time because I've went through instances where I'm like "Mm, I don't feel really good about this but I'm like oh it's probably nothing and then a week later I'm like I was right I was right and so I just hope people trust themselves a little more and maybe a little more aware with their surroundings um but overall just be really entertained and like be ready for the ride and I feel like it's funny because, you know, there's a lot of with like the age of kind of streaming and everything and binging. There's a lot of shows or like movies that you could just like passively watch, like when you come home from work and you just get a pizza and just kind of kick back and relax. This is not the movie. You kind of have to pay. <laughs> you if have you to dial in. One second, you're like, wait, 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 wait. We got to rewind. We got to rewind. You got to pay attention because if you pay attention, there might be some little clues that you'll pick up on. 
if you know whether if you're not so oh absolutely i'm curious what your mindset is before you start a project does it depend on the project do you have kind of a little like kind of formula or thing that you do or method that you do before kind of preparing for roles or does it depend on the project like what's the mindset before you go work on a project brenna i think with every project i go into it just saying i know everybody's trying to get through the same day crew cast everybody um so i really want my job to also be uh, make it easier for everybody as much as I can. Um, but for character work, it definitely depends on the project. I did two horror shorts over the summer as well, and I kind of approached those the same way as I did Night Night. Um, just because I start to ask myself more of the whys and, yeah. you know, why am I reacting like this? Why is she feeling like this? And I had a little notebook on the plane over to Texas where we filmed in Corsicana just writing down every single thought I, that she had. Because building a relationship with me and the character is so important. For sure. Does it blow your mind of the direction that horror has gone as a genre? Like, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's getting more psychological. And I think it's that's why it's getting more scary and not as... Um, Jump like, scares, terrible. gore. Like, people are scary. Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I love that it's getting more into the psychological aspect because I think that's terrifying to me. No, it, it, it's scary. Have, are you, have you done escape rooms before? I love this. Yeah, but now they have like horror themed escape rooms and it's just It's terrifying. I did one in the dark, like pitch black. Okay. Man. So I did one. It's funny. I just <laughs> I I just did one like well, I did one before the pandemic and everything. I just talked about it on on another episode actually. But I'm doing the, this and it's like it's a house and there's a murder. Like a girl got murdered and, you know, you're trying to find clues and you're in like a house, there's a kitchen, right? And there's the there's basically the kitchen sink area and everything where you're doing the dishes. And one of the things you have to do is you have to get the locket that's in the drain. So you have to pull the, like, the locket up. But they put windows, right, on top of that. Like, it, there's a window and then there's the sink. So you're washing your dishes and there's a window right there. So they purposely, like, have you, like, go down and, like, dig for the locket. You look up and someone's right there in a mask. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. I hate it. And then they know it. Eh? The people work, I, I, you know, you gotta love the people working at the escape rooms, right? They know that they could just get to scare you, and they, they, and they find the target. That okay, he's our guy. <laughs> so strategic and so smart with it and you know they're just chuckling while they're walking away and they're probably like that's my god like they can just hear someone <laughs> like oh my god what's that noise it's like that's the person <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so much fun um you know you're part of the you, you were you were a big part of your kind of start so to speak was on disney you're part of the descendants movies i mean just i feel like when those were announced it was a huge deal like even before seeing actually seeing them or like trailers, the announcements for those because it was Disney Channel and like the concept of who was involved with it. Um, what was it like kind of being part of the Descendants, being part of that world, first of it all? It was just the best. Just the, I can't, it was just so surreal and it's still so surreal to me that that Descendants 1 was my first booking ever. And so as a 13 year old, I was like, what? Still to this day, I'm like, What? But uh, I'm so grateful for it. And, like, I know I know when people say, like, oh, me and the cast were, like, family. I want you to truly believe and everybody believe, like, we were and still are. And even with Night Night, we are still friends to this day. We still talk all the time. Um, and I think that's what I really carry and what was so special about um, uh, Descendants and Night Night is, like, we, we really just became all best friends. Oh, absolutely. You're the fourth Descendants guest on Pop Alternative. Fourth. <laughs> really? Oh yes. Goodness. So we talked to Anna Cathcart. We've talked to um, we talked to Boo Boo Stewart recently for the Austin Love Film Boo. Festival. And shout out a uh, uh, friend of the show, good friend of mine, Dylan Playfair. Dylan Playfair has been oh, on the show. I love Dylan. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. No, it's crazy. But I'm just really curious because it's something that I kind of asked Taylor Gray because he's also a night night. When I spoke to him about it as well, because he had the same. He was on a Nickelodeon show, Bucket and Skinner. So I'm just curious because. You look at a lot of Disney, like projects like Disney Channel or Nickelodeon, a lot of those like kid shows or movies, and that was like a stepping stone for a lot of people. That's kind of where they kind of um, got their first big break, and they did like um, big photo shoots and press, and they're prepping and everything. But I'm curious, like when you were doing it, was the stepping stone come to mind when you were talking to like your your team and your family, or was it just like, oh, I'm on Disney Channel, I'm excited, or did you think about like this is kind of like 
first step of like a lot of amazing things. I'm curious what it was when you were working on it. Yeah, I think we definitely um, were thinking about that reps family and all. Uh, and I didn't move to California when yeah. after I booked uh, Descendants, when after we filmed that, just because it was we thought it was the right thing to do, and it was. Um, but I think during the time, my parents and me like thankfully we just wanted to live so presently yep. and so in the moment and i think the strategizing and like thinking about what was next happened always after filming because we were so in it all the time and having so much fun there was like no time to think about anything else um but yeah like i said i moved to california when i was 14 and it's i've been here ever since um and i love it and i think that was definitely something that i needed to do for connection purposes and all of that there's no shelf life for the descendants movies like, they won't ever leave. <laughs> that right? makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. I literally, I sing, me and my my friends will still, if we're at a party or, like, at a gathering, they'll still put on the songs. And I'm like, you guys are amazing. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, it's, so, it's so fun. And I would I would give anything to go back. And Absolutely. Um, you know, Night Night, directed by Nikki Koss, you know, coming out November 16th. Um, starring yourself in an, just an amazing cast, you know, like Tony Todd, oh, Eric right. Roberts, Maddie Carter Opal, Derek Augustine, Taylor Gray, just like such a good Niels Visser's first film, like such a good cast. Um, so good. When you work on a film like this, obviously, you're a lot of people know you from the Descendants movies, you're acting and everything, but does it kind of pump you up with the opportunities of maybe going behind the camera and like writing and directing after working on a film like this? Has that ever come to mind? Yeah, it actually really inspired me being around Nikki and Ryan Delaney. And, and uh, for now, I, I've always had an interest in doing, you know, a little bit of everything. But I was when I was watching Ryan, like I he's our producer, Ryan yep. Delaney. And I just had a love for it because just watching him um, make everybody's day a little easier and putting out fires while still being positive and not letting people know what was going on behind the scenes and also just having like this different perspective just out here. I was just like, I w I'm so interested in it. And he really did inspire me to get into producing more, which uh, fingers crossed that will happen. But also watching Nikki, how can you not be inspired by her? She oh, she's awesome. She wants, but she's also so collaborative, but she knows what she wants. She's just like literally so good. And she's also an actor. So that helped us so much too. Definitely. She she has kind of both sides of it, which is mm -hmm. which is amazing as well. Um, Brett, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative and chatting. This was awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, night night, November 16th. And uh, where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Brenna D'Amico, just my name on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And then on TikTok, it's Brenny, B-R-E-N-N-I-E-8-8. And you're doing a lot of the, the like, you're doing, the, this is like a press day. We're doing a lot of these interviews. You talk to a lot of people. I'm sure, like, you know, everyone's going to have, like, a Descendants question. Is it going to motivate you for more <laughs> throwback stuff on your Instagram that you're going to Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely got to post some throwbacks of Descendants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You're going to be able to catch Brenna D'Amico in Night Night, directed by Nikki Koss, November 16th. Until next time, this is Brenna and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.